Hey everyone, this is Lloyd De Jong, and I'm back with another exciting interview. And I've got today, I've got Gerald Bailey. He is the owner and founder of Suarez International South Africa. Gerald, good sp- good speaking to you. Oh, thank you, Lloyd. Yeah, I appreciate this opportunity. Yeah, no, no, thanks for coming on. Um, yeah, just so everyone knows, I've trained with you. I trained with you in, I believe it was 2016. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, no, I did I did a course called Tactical Movement for Pistol and Rifle 1. Which, which I found fantastic. Uh, the training was, was very professional, very well presented. Gerald, if you can tell us a little bit, just a brief introduction about yourself, how you got into firearms, what you did before. <laughs> I'm, I'm a South African male. <laughs> uh, well, as, as with most South African males, um, after school, I went to the military. I, I served in the South African Navy. Um, but I've, I've always just, I've loved the workings of firearms, how they work, how they're designed. Um, shooting is just always a giggle. Um, so just naturally got into it, um, just uh, started in farms, I guess, fairly late, not growing up on a farm or anything. Um, my first experience was quite painful, squeezing off uh, the double triggers on a double uh, side-by-side shotgun. So two shot, uh, shots going off in your uh, kid's shoulder was quite sore. Um, but it's, you know, loved it, um, shooting the various disciplines in sporting and now as an instructor for Suarez International. How did you get involved with, uh, with Suarez and how did you end up owning your own business? Um, well, I'd say by 2001, 2002, uh, Gabe Suarez contacted me uh, on the off chance that there's, there was an opportunity to host him. Um, not, not knowing how big a job it would be, uh, I just said, yeah, sure, why not? Come on through. Um, he arrived, um, and we just, we, you know, we obviously stayed with me, so we, we, we chatted a lot uh, after hours. He ran the classes. Um, it, it just so happens we, we kind of think, or I think a lot like him. And um, from that, it just grew. Um, I qualified as an instructor. I brought him out in 2010 again, um, and it's just grown from there. Um, and then just, you know, introducing South Africans to the Suarez International brand. Um, it does have a big following in South Africa. A lot of guys, until recently, didn't realize there was a South African chapter. Um, so that's generally in a, in, a, in, a, in a brief description of how it all started. Very interesting. You said uh, you and Gabe, you thought alike, had things in common. Do you want to tell me a little bit about that? Because <laughs> Gabe's a high-level professional, so I mean, the fact that there's, there's an overlap, that's, that's a compliment. So I'd like to know a bit more. Yeah, no, you know, it's, it's uh, thinking out of the box, um, not not focusing on outcomes-based training, but uh, utilizing uh, performance-based training, um, not entertaining your clients. It's, it's training your clients for their best uh, outcome, uh, packing your ego away. This is the sort of stuff when you, you know, I mean, I'm not, when I go to the States, I live with Gabe and his wife and his house. And, you know, what the Gabe you see is the Gabe you see. Um, he is a humble man. That's um, not because, oh, I've got his name here. <clears throat> but these are aspects that you know, I want in my life and it's how to treat clients and how to bring about um, the, the training curriculum in a way that the client will understand all thanks to him. Okay, no, it's good. So how, how have you found yourself developing and improving over the years since you've known him? What, what kind of influence has he been on you? Well, when, you, when you've got somebody of his stature and, and they, would turn, you know, they turn around confidently um, and say, uh, X, Y, Z is wrong because it won't work um, for various reasons. Uh, because somebody saying, you know, a YouTube warrior is busy rolling around on the ground and doing stupid things and everyone's wowing over it. And then he'll come out and say, hypothetically, oh, no, that's wrong. It doesn't work. You know, as when somebody of that caliber comes out and says, no, that is junk. You know, it, it gives you the confidence as a younger instructor to say, actually, let me review it. Yes, actually, it is rubbish. So the, the confidence building, uh, you know, under Gabe is, is phenomenal. Um, he's, he, you know, encouragement. Uh, he is definitely a man who will, he stands by his word. And that's that. Um, he, he backs his people up. I can tell you that from personal experience. Um, he will stand by his, his men and women 100%. If, you know, if we're just... That's it. We have his backing. And, and as I say, I've experienced that firsthand, thankfully. Uh, and, and I'm very happy to that. 
You know, my, my first introduction to Gabe was the Dialist Often series that he collaborated with uh, Mark Denny. Uh, oh, yes. It was very interesting. I must admit, I have a copy of it. Um, it, is, it is a very good uh, video series. And the instruction right. is, is first class, certainly first class, no nonsense, mm -hmm. to the point. And I, I like what you said, that he's performance oriented. Um, I've heard that, but all the best instructors seem to really have that as a requirement for their students. And but, I, I fully agree with that. Over the years, um, what were some of your, besides Gabe, but what are some of the other influences you've had, good or bad, formative influences over the last couple of years? Well, well the bad ones, um, uh, the positive influences, Kelly McCain, uh, phenomenal um, combatives, things out of the box, it, stuff that works. It's, 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 it's phenomenal uh, combatives that he teaches. Uh, I mean, I've had two of my clients already use it uh, upcountry very effectively. Dave Lumpratt's mm -hmm. uh, um professional of notes. I don't collaborate with other instructors, but I, I'm, I'm talking with them. You know, I've got some guy, some gentlemen in America that I, I, I greatly admire. Abner Miranda, Tier 1 Citizen, uh, Dave Spaulding. We have general chit-chats, and it, it's and I'm learning. Um, you know, Dave Spaulding is a gentleman who's older than me, but with years more experience. So, you know, generally when he talks, I shut up and I listen and I take notes. You know, because as with our with our curriculum, it's never static. And I, and I always want to be better. I, um, you know, to a point as well, um, um, Travis Haley, uh, there's, there's some on his biomechanics, uh, how the body works, stuff like that, and, and getting into the science of shooting and how the body is, that has is, is really benefited me in my classes and being able to help clients overcome certain uh, hurdles. So, yeah, that's, that's a few of them. No, I'll vouch for that because when I did the training with you, you were able to immediately address various postural issues, various alignment issues. You know, you very quickly made solid sense of it. You were able to say, look, stand as such. You even took uh, photos of using the app on your phone to illustrate the ideal posture and the ideal alignment. And the improvement in the shooting was remarkable and very, very quick. It, it, and it does. You know, it, I find, especially here in South Africa, we have a mindset of, you know, in, in 1970, we, you know, we made a plan and we just did it. Um, we didn't need anybody. And that mindset seems to have stuck. Unfortunately, I find a lot of the instructors, like you, you want to go up to them and say, hey, look, here, here's, my, here's my phone. I want to introduce you to the internet and, and what's happening out there. You know, there's a whole world out there that you can learn from. There's good and bad, but there's, there's good stuff that, that we can learn from to better yourself as an instructor. That, that's one of the hurdles that we come up against in South Africa, I think, is our, is our mindset. We still, we, we, we logger around and we go, no, no. We don't need anybody. I understood. No, I agreed. I don't think it's, it's particular to South Africa. Uh, a word that you mentioned twice is biomechanics. Mm. And um, I noticed from the training with you that you take a very sports science methodical approach. You, you operate like a coach and it's, it's very disciplined. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about that? You mentioned uh, Travis Haley with biomechanics, but can you tell us a bit more about how you got into that? Because Al Vashford, has, again, has been a very, very effective method of training. Yeah, it, it's... Um... And I studied biology on a tertiary level, and I graduated through that. So, and I come from a medical background with my family, so I've always loved medicine. You know, it's, it's everybody's been created differently. Our body types are all different. Some are fat, some are thin, some are skinny. Some that's life. That's politically incorrect. I know we can't call people fat, but facts are facts. Facts don't care about your feelings. Um, so we're all built differently. But on top of that, we all are. are um, uh, in, in diving, we call it a fudge factor. You know, the things that hold us back, each one's got a unique uh, a unique one. Someone might have a, a gammy knee uh, or a bad elbow or suffering from tennis elbow, something like that. So understanding the biomechanics of the body, what the body can naturally do, we take I take that and then I'll see, okay, what are your fudge factors? Okay, you've got a gammy knee. All right. You can't, you've got to work around that. So you, you do have a bit of a hobble of a walk. So we need to build that kind of natural <laughs> natural hobble into your movement drill. Um, the other day I had a gentleman, he's got, he had uh, two broken ankles that have kind of semi-repaired and the bullet is still in his upper thigh. You know, he's, he's not exactly doing Chuck Norris kicks. <laughs> he's not. So we had to work around those fudge factors and get him on the go to what he can do. So with, with biomechanics, performance-based training, it's, it's more client-focused. It's a more mature way to train people. 
because now you, you're not criticizing, but you're building them up, but they have to self criticize themselves and say, you know what, I can do better. You know what, I can work harder at this. And with the biomechanics of their body, we can, I can also help them and say, right, this is what you could probably do to try and um, make this a, a less of a, a hindrance to you, you know, on, on the shooting range in defense of your life. Um, you know, for myself, uh, when I was born, um, and I, I only know this because I've seen the x-rays, my one vertebra didn't fuse. So, so I've got a very bad lower back, but through personal training, which I learned from Gabe Suarez uh, in your own personal time, not gym time, I, for the past 10 years, I've never had back problems because I train to strengthen it. Yeah, you, you do take a very personalized approach to, to each student. It certainly wasn't, it didn't feel like a factory, one size fits all, fits all the run of the mill kind of thing. Yeah, there was very much an individualized approach and each one was, was assessed and then given recommendations based on their particular reality, the ground reality to them. Tell us a little bit about the curriculum that you offer. What are the different products or how do you, what do you whatever you would call them in terms of what you teach? We, we, we start off with an essential foundation class. Essential foundations forms the basis of absolutely everything. I mean, you would never build a, a, a house where your foundations are, ma are made of cardboard and then put glass structure up. It will eventually fall down. Um, so essential foundations are, are just absolutely critical. Well, it's in the name. They're essential. Um, but it is one of the least trained um, um, curriculums around the world. Everybody wants to dive out of windows and blow up cars and stuff like that. Um, but you know, the essential foundations are, are lacking. So we start. We actually start every class off with an essential foundation review. Um, although I do have a dedicated class, essential foundations, um, where we really go into it. We spend time um, going over and solidifying the, the essential foundations. And you know, I, where I show the clients where okay, avoid this, and this is the reason why you want to avoid this stance or that grip. Um, then we'll go on to a close range gun fighting two. That's kind of the the, the meat and potato class, um, that's when we introduce the, the client into movement. Uh, I think that's the class that you did. Um, movement, uh, one-handed shooting. We, we take the, the, the shooting range um, almost to a 360-degree shooting, it's, it's as safe as we can on a shooting range. Um, but that's when we'll introduce various techniques which are combat-proven or reality-based that work. But again, all the while explaining why. Uh, from that, you'll, you can go into close range gunfighting three, which is a bit more dynamic. We use uh, uh, force on force, um, uh, more dynamic disarms. From there, you can go into a, uh, a shotgun class. A uh, shotgun is, it, there's not a lot to do with a shotgun. Um, but then we'll go into, uh, I've got two new classes uh, Ultimate AR class, uh, that's your AR 15 platform, and Ultimate um, AK Galil class. Within those classes, I've split them up for the reason is that um, with the AR, I'll, I teach a client um, how to strip the rifle, um, what parts wear quicker than other parts, what parts must they look out for, how do you set your rifle up. Um, so I teach them about the equipment, which is, is critical. And then from there, I teach them how to shoot it and then start with movement drills um, and more dynamic stuff, various uh, positions. Uh, shooting positions and stuff, and so with the, the same with the, um, the the AK Galil platform. That's quite extensive, and that's without even getting into your structure combatives as well as your vehicle combatives. Yeah, and your other topics, low light, self defense, and the law. Uh, you spoke very extensively about that and safety. I must admit, you had a very very strong emphasis on safety and discipline, um, which yeah. I which I found very satisfying when I worked with you. There's so many things I want to I want to tackle, but I have a question first, and then I, then I want to ask you three specifics that that you that your course discusses. Why do you teach a client to strip the weapon? It it, it helps the client to understand the the platform that they're working with. And look, I mean, I enjoy it as well. I mean, because I get you know the work, I love the workings of the guns, but it helps the client to understand. Like, let's take an AR. Now suddenly, because the client understands how this platform works. Suddenly down the line, he's, ha he's shooting a sport match or whatever, and something happens. Now in his brain, um, he can understand, okay, wait, the bolt comes back and it does, oh, wait, maybe I've got a broken recoil spring because I'm not hearing that ding -ling, ling sound. Or, or maybe my gas port wasn't tight enough, so I'm getting less gas in my tube, so it's not – it helps him to understand their platform and, and diagnose 
problems. Um, so it's, it's important to understand that and, and, and get used to the sound of their rifle and how, how does a, a working rifle sound. Um, and, you know, if you've got a, a failure to eject case, that round did not feel right. It's, it helps in the self-diagnosis. Okay, and obviously you want to be sure that this weapon will function when it's needed the most. For sure, yeah. Uh-huh. There's three things that, that you emphasize um, when looking at your website, and you've, you've mentioned it to me in discussions as well, directly and obliquely reference these. Your courses are reality-based, student-focused, and combat-proven. Now, the, the term reality-based is, is in many cases, I think, overused. Mm-hmm. Then again, there are those people who have a, a degree of integrity and are, are desperately or committed to being as realistic as possible, understanding the problem um, and defining it clearly before they provide solutions, whereas some may or may not have that, that, that contact with reality and they, they're presenting fantasy solutions to fantasy problems now. Can you tell us a little bit about your concept and how it influences uh, what you teach in terms of reality-based, being student-focused and combat-proven? Well, I mean, yeah, the reality base is you, you touched on it earlier, you know, where I want to take what your body can do naturally and we weaponize it. That's a quote from Terry Tehran. Um, you know, it, it's, I want to work with reality. I want to say to the guys, you know, look, sitting in, 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 and smelling the daisies all day whilst the bad guys are prowling and growling and trying to kill you, you know, that's, <laughs> that's bad currency. You want to be ever prepared. You've got to, you can't go too wackadoodle and, and get all gruesome and you know, start studying pictures of mutilated bodies. That's just weird and you deserve to be in a, an institution for that. But we want to be reality focused. I don't want to have a technique which doesn't work. It, it doesn't work with your body. So how can you do it? I don't want to, you have to retrain your body. Um, I've seen that all too often. Student focused, well, I mean, I, I think you, you, you pretty much handled that with what you've been saying about my teaching style. Uh, combat proven, well, like I say, uh, I know up in the Eastern Cape, um, you know, two of my clients, after leaving the classes, they, they went and, you know, with co- the combatives, um, sorted out a potentially very bad situation very quickly. The technique came from Gabe, which obviously we, we, we teach. A gentleman we know in the early 2000s in Afghanistan solved a, pot- a very well, potentially a lethal situation to himself, you know, used the technique, got off the line and actually solved the problem. You know, it, it's proven, it's it's simple, you can do it. Uh, and, and I think that forms the basis. I've been told with my with my one book, it's it's too simple, it's basic. That's what it's meant to be. Techniques are meant to be easy because in a time of stress, what do you go to? You go to easy, you don't go to complex. Um, so... It must be easy. It must work with your body. Okay, no, thanks for that explanation. As a South African, as someone who who understands the, the situation in South Africa, uh, can I have your thoughts maybe on, on the firearms training industry in South Africa? Is it appropriate to the conditions we find ourselves in, in terms of our crime and violent crime in this country? Well, what are some of your thoughts? Without without naming names, I mean, it's just, uh, we just, I'd just like to get some of your thoughts on maybe some of the potential some of the good points and some of the bad points of uh, various training that is offered in the country and and where you feel you separate yourself. (laughs) I'm going to get so many less Christmas cards this year now. (laughs) No, I'd just like to get some of your your honest thoughts. But I mean, uh, understand everyone has a, as an opinion, and it's. Uh, I don't want to be overly controversial. We're not here to slag people, but um, I'm sure you've got some. I'm sure you've got some of your own thoughts. Pretty much every morning, I do an hour to two hours worth of research because I want to know what's new out there, uh, what's applicable, what's what's happening in crime trends, stuff like that. I would say there's probably about two other instructors that are okay. You know what? Thumbs up. Um, not that I'm judging them or anything like that. Um, I'm just, you know, rating them in my opinion. I say two instructors that, yes, unfortunately, there are the vast majority of instructors, they run run away and they go and do the the, the basic class so they can do competencies and stuff. And they they join up with various organizations. From what I've seen, uh, I've seen people running towards you know, the target, which is the representing the armed person falling on the ground and having a gun battle on the ground after you flicked around at them, and flick is a quote, 
to people jumping over barrels and shooting. It's, you know, it's, it's not a very well regulated industry. And then again, on the flip side, I, it should not be a regulated thing, but it's not top, top quality. I do not uh, see instructors bar, let me see one, one of the two, the other one I do not know. So uh, I, I can't say if he does or does not. Um, I do not see instructors in South Africa attending credible classes where they are a student, not going there to steal, but going there as a student. When you shut up, you listen, you learn. I don't see that. Uh, I think, unfortunately, in the training world in South Africa, we have very unteachable male instructors. I don't know. I don't know about the females, but yeah. So I'm curious. I mean, look, if you look at something like the U.S., which is a gun culture, and has lots of instructors, lots of competition, it's, it's easy to find quality instruction and it's easy to compare. In South Africa, we're pretty isolated. We're very far from the rest of the world. I mean, the next stop is the South Pole for us. We're kind of isolated, which means that bad ideas do not necessarily get moved out of the culture as quickly as they could otherwise. Would that be correct? I've seen some complete and utter idiots in America. I mean, you know, it's just take that gun away from that guy and don't even give him knitting needles. Just, just you know, stay away from anything sharp. Um, and so, like so I'm saying, curious. You, you, you. Um, I mean, you have a reputation for being a little controversial. Um, <laughs> a little bit. You know, I, and Gabe has a reputation for being very controversial. Do you think some of your views come from him, or, or is that is that one of those places where you guys overlap? I think no. I, it, look, it, it, it's. Um, I think it's in areas that we overlap. I mean, you speak to my mother. <laughs> oh boy. Sometimes she just shakes her head and goes, where did I get you from? I am naturally <laughs> controversial. Right? What changes, what positive changes, if you were in charge of firearms training in South Africa, for instance, what are some of the positive changes you would bring? What are the, and how would you bring it into better alignment to deal with the, the needs of, of our good gun owners that, that are dealing with the deadly threats in this country? You know, that, that is, that's a massive, massive question. Uh, it, and I do not think it actually starts with the civilian legal firearm owner. Um, that, that sort of question is, is on the desk of our police commissioner. The police, the training is of such a low standard. It is so shocking. And the reports I'm getting from guys inside, it is, they say literally it's, you know, they're interested in hair and nails, and that's that, and a paycheck. If you could change their syllabus, what would you do? Well, it, 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 it actually, it'll, it goes before that. It'll, it goes into recruitment. It'll be part of the psych test that would be to determine, is this guy, does he feel, you know, black, white, colored, I really don't care. Does he feel he was born to be a police officer, a servant of the people, a servant of the law? Yes, no. I think we realize that there are certain shortcomings with, within the, the administration that we have. Mm. But, but, but these are issues that, that we can't solve at our pay grade, unfortunately. Ultimately, then comes back to the, to the gun owner. Many people buy a gun and they feel that's almost sufficient. They'd, they'll spend 15,000 Rand on a gun and they'll mm. balk at spending 800 Rand on training, you know, which is, a, which is yeah. a, I think, a common issue. How would you improve things for the, in terms of the training that is offered to gun owners? Do you think we have a good, you know, what, what is offered and what the law d dictates as to, you know, what is required? Do you think that's good enough or how would you improve it? No, I, I look, pers personally, I feel that um, we have a mindset uh, problem here. Uh, there's a mindset of, you know what, I've purchased a firearm, it sits in my safe, I am now bulletproof to anything because the gun will solve all the problems. You know, and I was actually having a discussion on the range today with the clients, uh, one of the guys attending the class. You know, people in South Africa, uh, and look, I don't know about America, they purchase a firearm, and as you said, they spend, let's say, 15,000 Rand on a firearm, and they put it on a, um, you know, a, f a 50 rand belt. Um, they put, you know, full metal jackets, the cheapest full metal jackets, probably reloads into their carry rounds. They buy a 100 rand Kondura holster, and that's it. Hey, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm good to go. And it, we, we, what I, what I teach people as well is, is that it's no, no. When you, when you purchase a farm, you purchase a rig, your daily rig. Now, what determines that rig? Well, it's your mission. What is your daily mission? And all our missions are different. Um, you know, uh, a surgeon, I've got clients who are surgeons, and it's like, 
They say, look, I've got a Glot 26. I need to carry it in the hospital. We've got to figure out a solution for them. That's their mission. Um, so, you know, a thigh holster doesn't fit their mission. Um, I think, you know, putting that in to help people understand it's, it's, it's a lifestyle modification. Um, when, you, when you purchase a firearm, it's now you are responsible for that firearm and you need to be a professional with it in your art set, your mindset, the way you talk to people. Everything must change. You don't debate the, the anti-gun nuts. You can reason and talk, but you know what? Me, if you don't disagree with me, I don't care. I'm not going to fight with you. So as I say, the mindset needs to change um, in an ideal world uh, with, with, with the training. Uh, the competencies that we do now are, I don't know. It's, it's bare bones. It is bare bones. Um, unfortunately, it's, it's for the, the grade C security guard. Um, I think it also may create a full sense of complacency or security for those who've done it to feel that this is what they need and don't go beyond that. For sure, for sure. I mean, I've had, you know, what's it, 15, 20 year uh, police, uh, public order cop come, come in here and, and we just genuinely, like you and I sit and chit chat. Um, and he, took to, he turns to me and says, I've actually got to come to your class. I know nothing. And this guy's got more combat experience than me. But he realized that we're just, we're just discussing essential foundations, how the brain works under stress, how the body's working. He's just, you know, and two hours later, I've done no work and he's got free training. Interesting. As a compliment to you and as a South African, I, I would hope for really high standards um, and high quality of, of effective training for those people who own firearms. I mean, I think it's a real need in this country. You know, the threats are real. The, the, the crime is, is, is a real issue here. Um, yeah, yeah th these are subjects we can obviously expand on, but uh, there's so many things to chat about. I'd like to touch on on various things. When I was with you, you you mentioned the law fairly often. Um, can you just just briefly, in terms of uh, the law and um, how how you teach that and, and why it's important for for clients to to know that? You know, when I do an essential foundations, it, the, the the people of uh, the attendees have generally done it in a uh, their competency, but it's, it's, and look, I'm no lawyer, um, but I wanted them to have just a basic understanding. You know, I've done, I'm doing research now for our fourth book, uh, Self-Defense and the Law, and the seminar. Um, I, my ideal is I want my clients to walk away and go, all right, I understand a little bit more about the law so they become a more responsible citizen, but they also understand the police have procedures that they have to follow, so they're more a responsible citizen, but they also understand their rights, and that's a big thing. You know, we don't, as you know, I don't delve for an hour into the law. Uh, I think everybody will probably fall asleep. But it's just a, it, you know, where, where it, a learning opportunity occurs uh, during the class. I'll bring something up, you know. Or it's, it's like today I had the, the question, oh, are hollow points legal in South Africa for civilians? So it's a learning opportunity. This is what the law states. Mm -hmm. Understanding it is, is it's, a, it's another, in inverted commas, weapon in your toolkit. You're, you're right. You're right. Uh, yeah, I found that, as you said, these learning opportunities that you, you mentioned, everything you said was very topical and relevant. You, you introduced it at the right time so that it was it made sense to that to the student at that moment in time. You know, it cleared another obstacle out of their way, which they may not have realized was an obstacle. I found it introduced very professionally uh, that you, you observe your students very carefully and you do time the information to be to make the most impact. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so a couple of things. You mentioned your books. Now, I, I discovered that you have three books already on Amazon and you said you're busy on two more. Perhaps you can tell us about that and expand on them because I think those are relevant topics and you can tell us a bit more about what you do. What got you to write them? <laughs> um, I think there was an economic slump in South Africa as so I had a little extra time. Um, so I thought, oh, what the hell? Let me just write a book. So it's like Mr. O'Reilly is listening to this, my old English teacher. I've got five books I'm doing. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> with hopefully no spell mistakes. Um, yeah, no, the, the, the first book is, I've literally just took my, at that stage, because now it's changed, it's developed even further, my dynamic vehicle combatives class, and I put it into a book form. Um, the, the books, the way I write them, it's in conversational tone, uh, which some people might not like. Um, it's... I try to bring it across, as I said, like with my class, where it's simple terminology. There's not all these big words. You can read it. Um, you can read it in a night. They range from about 100, 100 pages to 130 pages. 
Uh, it's based uh, on a South African perspective. You know, I, I like to be able to, and, and this is the term I borrowed from um, Travis Haley, is set yourself up for success. You know, if you can avoid a gunfight or any conflicts, hey, you've won. So I know that's not very Rambo and, and, and man, um, but it's, it's the wise thing. You want to get home to your family, to your loved ones. So if you can avoid it, if you can see it early, great, you can avoid it. Um, so that, you know, in, in uh, the, first, the first two books, well, the first book is on dynamic vehicle combatives. The second one is structure combatives. That is um, a South African perspective on how to set your, your castle up using the environment, uh, security, all that sort of stuff, uh, and still live in your house, but cre- creating layers of defense. Uh, the third book, uh, which I don't know if there is one out there, is uh, How to Train Your Children in Firearms Safely. Yeah, children and Firearms, it's called. Yeah, Children and Firearms, and that. Um, I've got three boys who all, I mean, they all started shooting at just before their third birthday. So it's literally... Stuff that I've learned that has worked well with my boys, stuff I've spoken to with fellow instructors that I respect uh, who are also fathers, and I've got their perspective. And I just put it into, a, I think it's an 80-page book or something like that. Um, is that the, the fourth book I'm writing in conjunction with a friend of mine, uh, Detective Rudolf Rue. Uh, he's a 15-year detective, and that's the self-defense and the law. Uh, that, that's not really to do anything to do with knives or guns. It's actually it's also our, the seminar that, we, that we're going to be presenting uh, where we go to companies on their locations and we teach them about their rights. We teach them police procedures from a policeman's point of view. We teach them crime scene management, how to avoid a crime scene, how to not become part of the chain of evidence and i.e. end up in court because you touch the evidence or you disturb the evidence and now you're going to spend a day in court not earning any money. Um, whilst you wait for a prosecutor to call on, call on you. Um, but also so you don't tamper with evidence, so it makes the crime scene uh, pure. Uh, and so the crime scene techs uh, and forensic guys can have an untainted uh, crime scene. Or if there's an injured person, what to do, stuff like that. So we actually build up to crime scenes where they, they get very practical experience. And then we teach them arrest techniques, uh, which you know, civil, as civilians we can do. The um, so yeah, that book is going to be out in a month or two's time. The the fourth, oh, sorry, the fifth book that is uh, the Combative Red Dot Pistol. Uh, Gabe Suarez has written two phenomenal books on um, the Red Dot, and you know what? Call a spade a spade. Uh, Gabe has taken the Red Dot from where Kelly McCain, you know, kind of as for for EDC for everyday carry. Kelly McCain kind of slotted a uh, doctor site, the original doctor site, onto a Glock 19. Uh, Gabe has taken it to, you know, to ninja level, to Chuck Norris level, and, and really, really taken it there. So uh, he, he wrote two books on that. I've literally just taken kind of what he's done, and I've just, for lack of a better term, bolted it up, you know. So I, I, I go kind of a bit more into depth of holster, holster selection, what holsters to avoid, what you know, uh, the selection of the top five red dot sites. Um, you know, I, I predict in five years' time, the red dot pistol for everyday carry will be pro- prolific here in South Africa. Um, and uh, so we're just getting ahead of the curve. So this is more of the, the, the guide. If you want to put a red dot on your pistol, uh, where do you go? Well, here's a book. This will set you up from day zero to where you've set it up now and now you can start doing those 100-yard, those 100-meter shots. And you've got something that's a selection that's in your budget. Under which circumstances would, would an owner of a firearm with the red dot side need to shoot at 100 meters? <laughs> Here in South Africa, well, you know, it's, it's, we, we get it, we're starting to pick up a lot of dashboard cams where there's cash and transit just occurring on the highway. Um, it, it's not necessarily, oh, I need it for, for self-defense, a, a 100 meter shot. But what it is, it's, it's taking... Uh, pistol craft now to the next level where we're refining it. So we're saying, you know, uh, we, we're not we're not going for the A zone. We're going for the A on that in the A zone that the, you know on the IPSC target. You got the A there. That's what we're going for. So we're refining it. So the essential foundations are critical, and the setup of your pistol, you know, we, we're taking it, we're refining it, we're sharpening that point. Um, you know, yes, you can stab somebody with uh, uh, a butter knife, but you know what? If you've got a sharp knife, ah, 
that's even better. Would this be applicable? Because I know some of the crimes that are committed here, one of the one of the sad things about South Africa, these farm murders that are occurring, would this would this give a farmer who's got a handgun with a red dot sight an edge or some sort of opportunity to, to, to combat someone with an AK, for instance, who can who can stand off at that range? Would this give him realistic opportunity to hit someone at that range? It's kind of a loaded question because, you know, again, as I said earlier, we want to have lifestyle modification. So, um, you know, this I, I want that farmer that um, he understands the pros and cons of his, of his platform that he's chosen. Um, you know, he's up against an AK, there's, if he has an opportunity, run. But, you know, by, on the, 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 the physiological side is, you know, we start hitting our 40s, our eyes um, deteriorate. So now to start focusing on our front sight, mate, um, mating up with our, our rear sight, that is now time. And now it's slightly dark. I can't pick up my sight. There's a hesitation where now when you present it and there's that dot, bearing in mind that he's trained, he's, he has sought out excellence. You know, he's, he's put the time behind the platform. You, you can't expect to be a sniper after shooting 10 shots with your 308. But because you dressed as a gill, in a ghillie suit, you're the man. You've got to spend time behind your platform. If he has, and he understands his platform, and he's taking firearm ownership seriously, and he's seeking excellence, you know, 50 meters, he sees the guy on his farm, and he's got an AK. It's a doable shot. It's a very doable shot. Yeah. Okay, no, that, that's good information. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I think, especially for those who, who do live under potential threat, I mean, any advantage is... Is, is valuable. Yeah, you're talking about the, the, the Rambos. I watch YouTube like like everyone else. And I, you do see training that is very dynamic, very interesting, lots of fun. I do look at it. Now, I am no firearms expert. And I do look at it and I go, how realistic or actual, you know, what are you actually learning? It, it's a lot of fun. I mean, no doubt. I, I would go do it and I'd have a ball of a time, you know. Um, yeah. But... Um, yeah, there, there is an emphasis on doing a lot of stuff that doesn't necessarily have any, any viable skills transfer. I know you do um, uh, dynamic vehicle combatives with firearms, as well as uh, combatives inside the vehicle. And how do you feel that your approach differs to, to what is out there? Because what I've seen on the video on YouTube is that your approach is much calmer, slower, more methodical versus the dynamic Rambo, run around, jump up and down, you know, throw grenades and shoot things. So tell us a bit about that, please. A, a term that was coined by Abner Miranda, tier one citizen, um, is entertainment, and we're seeing the, we're seeing the training out there um, in South Africa and America and stuff. Uh, actually, and and let's just paint the we will we'll pour the, the the paint bucket over Europe. Um, is where people come to class where they are being entertained. The more kind of drills the guys can do, and the dirtier they get, they walk away and it's woohoo, it's wonderful. You know, like with my, my dynamic vehicle class, I I teach people and I say. As far as possible, as humanly possible, avoid the ground. Now, you look at some of the top classes in America and stuff, the guys are on the ground in it. You know, it, it's number one, what is your mission? Well, mine is civilian based because the civilian population are the guys being t tackled. Avoid the ground. Why? Because I'm in a shopping center. There's stones there and there's ricochets and stuff. And if I can, if I can shoot through my car, which an animal will go through quite happily both doors, that bad guy stuff will also do that. So if I can move off the line and put three or four cars in between us, suddenly that changes things. That nine mile run's not going to get through and get to me. And I'm changing the dynamics of the fight. You're right. I, I was shot at with a nine mile hard nose. It went through the through the pass the rear passenger window. Only missed my neck because I ducked and it went out the passenger door and ended up in the tarmac. The car is paper thin as far as the uh, the second shot hit the door lock, fortunately, which stopped the bullet. But if it hadn't been the door lock, you know, it would have been me. So, yeah, I do understand that. I agree. If you're static, you're a fixed target. The guy can line up or walk his bullet he runs into you. Tell us a bit more. I mean, in case I've missed anything as to why you don't want to go to the ground. Think of yourself. Now, now you kneel down and there's a pebble there. We've, we've all uh, had that yes. opportunity. So we've knelt down and... You know, with, oh, my, my patella, oh, my gosh. Y you are hampering yourself now through a bad technique. There was this one drill that I was shown, and I'm sorry, I, I'm just going to have to say it here. Um, and I, send me the email if you're complaining about it, you don't like it. Krav Magath, uh, the idiots, they, they, they were 
they were one-handed shooting and now they wanted to load their firearm, i.e. they wanted to cock their slide. So they put it onto the soft part of the soft meat of their inner forearm and cock it there. I said, you soft, if, you, if your arm, I don't know, but your arm is out of action. I said, well, if your arm's out of action, you sure as hell not going to flex the muscle and keep it rigid to do that. So it makes no sense. And if my arm is still good, why am I shooting one-handed? And why do I want to rip that backslide on my soft flesh and injure myself? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> Look, no offense to anyone who does crap, my God. But it is everyone's favorite whipping boy. So. Yeah, I love the Israelis. But you, ca- you cannot take a military system and put it in for civilians. I'm sorry. There I said it. You know, okay. You know, burn the cross outside my, my house. I don't care. You can't do you know, people will agree with you there. Their SOPs, their ROEs are different. I've chatted to them. It's it's ludicrous. It's utterly ludicrous. And uh, I'm happy to say that our, a lot of our farmers are booting them off our off their training farms and are calling us. And one of my things, like with the vehicle stuff, the farmer, he's got a job to do. He doesn't have time to spend a day on the shooting range. He does not have that time. The combative skill sets that we do in the vehicle class, the guy can take a Take the guy down in his tractor. He can take the guy down with the same technique in his in his um, truck, in his pickup, in his car, in his little what's it, that little Mercedes micro vehicle or whatever. He can use the same technique in each environment. It, it does not matter. So you know you've got cross pollination between um, different vehicles. You can take the guy down in an in the airline. You can use the same technique with an airline, as a passenger. So it's, it works across all of those transport methods. On a train, it, it's the same, and that's what you want. That's why generally we kind of do one technique of a disarm. Why? Well, because of Hicks' law. Look it up on Wikipedia, Hicks' law. BS baffles the brain. Um, I'll let your listeners you know, go look it up. If you've got too many things, uh, too many things, too many options, your brain will actually eventually shut down, and because you, you're trying to, your brain's trying to sort through which technique shall I use? One simple technique, no ballet moves. One simple technique. Yeah, very interesting thoughts that you that you're putting out. I think in some of what you said uh, with people I've spoken with, many will agree with you there with, with much of what you said. I have one question though: the handgun. The word isn't hands gun. What is the, I understand it's, it's obviously much better to shoot two-handed, but what about shooting one-handed? When is it appropriate? When would you recommend it? Would you, would you generally say it's, it's better to shoot two-handed and so on? Just give us your thoughts on that. Sure, yeah. Uh, look, it is, it is uh, just for recoil uh, management. You know, and I t- I'm talking across uh, uh, most body types now, not, not the, you know, what's prolific now, the you know, bearded, muscular, tattooed guy who can shoot one-handed more accurate than we can shoot two-handed. Uh, you've got to think of Joe, you know, Joe Soap and his, and his wife. Uh, two-handed is obviously better because you've got better recoil management. You've got more, as it classifies, meat holding the, the firearm. Um, one-handed technique you would use in a dynamic movement where because I'm shooting, say, to my right, uh, directly to my right, I can't, I can't get a, a proper grip two-handed, so I'm going to use a one-handed grip there shooting around a, a barricade where maybe you have to kind of get off balance in your stance. So you've got to hold on to something. I'm cautioning myself to use the term, but it's more of an emergency shooting platform. Uh, it, it's, you are kind of forced to shoot one handed now. Bearing that in mind, it is a technique that you need to practice. Uh, it is definitely mm-hmm. usable. Left hand, right hand. I'm aware from, from the time I, that I spent with you previously that you, uh, you qualified all of your opinions. You, you would have your views, but you would qualify them and demonstrate or explain that this is how I came to this conclusion. So you wouldn't just say things without, without any particular reason. And, that, and, that's, and that's important. Yeah, you, get, you get too many people uh, standing on the hilltop screaming facts. Um, and then when you ask them, okay, why? Uh, uh, I... I, I, I <laughs> If you can explain to me why, you know, then you've afforded me an opportunity to learn and better myself and be a better instructor. And look, you know, that, that technique, I mean, that I learned from Gabe. I, I don't even think he even realized that he was teaching it. You know, I was watching him, how he brought it across. And again, I think 
one other instructor here that I respect greatly is he also teaches in that manner. I don't want to, obviously the, the agreement was that I, I want to keep the, the talk between 45 minutes to an hour so that it doesn't extend. Considering that there's, there's so much I could go back to or expand upon, there's so many different things, um, things we haven't even touched on yet that I have as discussion topics. I'll slowly start to wind it down because we're approaching the hour mark. Tell us a little bit about, and again, I think the issue in South Africa of the the, the farm motors, I mean, that's something relevant. And also home, home invasions. My my house was attacked. My brother was in the house. I wasn't, mm-hmm. you know, and um, this was at two o'clock on a Monday morning. Fortunately, you heard these guys. Now I had, the house had gates and bars and, uh, but they, they simply got themselves a, a pair of bolt cutters, got through the front gate, got through the security gate and the front door and started kicking down the door when they couldn't get in. Um, yeah. My brother braced the door with his back and these guys were talking about shooting through the door. Subsequent to that, my brother is now, let's say my house and my brother are now far more prepared for such an eventuality. Although mm-hmm. considering the, the, the amount of effort I've put into securing the place, it's my other house, it's it's less likely for that to happen, but it was obviously a very, very frightening situation. So in terms of structured combatives, I think mm-hmm. it's, for me, it was a lesson that hit home. I nearly lost my brother. I think this is something that people should learn. Can you just tell us a little bit about structured combatives, why you feel it's important, and uh, a little bit what you teach? Uh, I think this is something I would encourage people to learn because that could happen to you. You could be in your house and people come in on the farms. They certainly do that. And uh, give, give us your thoughts there, please. You know, your structure combatives, um, nothing really changes with our technique from, say, close range gunfighting, too. You can use it inside your structure. But setting yourself up for success, like I said earlier, you want layers. So, you know, they get through the first layer, that takes effort. They get through the second layer, that takes effort. The third layer, it's taking efforts. Um, you know, that, that will weed out most of the potential criminals. You know, the guy, like what, what your brother um, experienced, that, that, that's pretty dedicated. Uh, that's when, you know, again, a firearm in the house um, is required because it's shown a, a complete intent. You know, they want to get in and look, they've gone through all these layers. Setting your structure up, you know, you can use, say, environmental uh, deterrents, various cacti, uh, or plants-wise, stuff, you know, for perimeters uh, in South Africa, you've got sweet thorn, you know, for corners, stuff like that. Uh, those all act as deterrents. And, and look, unfortunately, what we're doing is we're just saying, don't come here. It's too much effort. Go next door. There we go. My, my, what I teach people is, is that, you know what, um, you don't go searching for them. If you don't have to, look, if, if my kid is, if they're between me and my child, fair enough, then you go. But um, never, ever um, discount the, the joy of a hasty ambush. Um, don't deny that, that, that violent thug. The, the, the joys of your hasty ambush. So gather in, uh, you know, we got standard operating procedures here, um, for our family. You know, they, if they eventually get through that door, there's, there's just love that I'm going to spread. My love dispenser gets refilled with more love. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, that, that's the thing. They've shown clear intent. And, um, you know, knowing a bit of the law and our justice system and, and, and also what they do to families here. It's horrific. I know. It's horrific. So, yes. You know, if it, if it ends up me, uh, you know, clawing at the eyes whilst I... Uh, I'm screaming at him and spitting in his eyes, so be it. I'm happy and joyful to do that if it means my family will live. I agree. Um, yeah, there's, there's so many things to discuss. There's so many other things I wanted to uh, pick up. But you, you've, you've touched on some of them, and there were, there were things we could really expand upon. And I, I think anyone who listens to this will be very curious to get your thoughts on other, on other issues. Your, your views are, are well thought out, and uh, you explain them very well. Your reasoning you. is, is good. Um, yeah, I need to slowly wind down so that we, we keep it within an hour and keep it reasonable. I, I could keep going, actually, <laughs> under, the, under these circumstances. It's very interesting. And thank you for actually speaking with me, for agreeing to. But uh, I look to uh, can, you, can you give us some contact info? If people want to get hold of you, uh, your phone number, your, your uh, social media addresses, website, all of these things, and also and where you're based so that people can get hold of you for future training. We're based in, uh, in Cape Town, Cape Town, South Africa. Uh, for our local classes, um, it's all up on our um, Facebook page. It's just Suarez International South Africa. Um, the Instagram account is Suarez Int SA. 
Twitter, Suarez International South Africa. Um, the website is uh, www.suarezinternational.co.za. And there are classes. Uh, we, I've, I've put up my year's program classes. So if you want to attend a class in November, you can book and pay now. Everything's done securely online. Um, there's our various products there available as well. Um, yeah, if you, if you want to host, uh, we I do travel. Uh, you know, it's America, England, kind of any freedom-loving country that, that loves its citizens. I'll go and train. So you can just email email me personally at Gerald at Suarez International dot co dot za. Um, or for general info, it's just the info at Suarez International dot co dot za. The books are up on Amazon. Yeah, it's it's enjoy them. That it's it's free, literally almost free information. But yeah. Yeah, just for those who need to know, how do you spell Suarez? S U A R E Z. Suarez. Okay, that would be Z for the Americans, right? Z, yeah. It's, it's like the soccer player, I believe. Um, okay, no, that's, that's fine. That's obviously named after Gabe Suarez. That is correct, yes. All right. Do you want to tell us about upcoming events in the next month, the couple of events that you've got going that people could possibly uh, sure. sign up for? Sure. Here in South Africa, I've got uh, on the 17th, actually this Saturday, I've got Essential Foundations. Uh, April 14th is Close Range Gunfighting 2. May the 19th is Dynamic Vehicle Combatives. Um, and then the, 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 the year curriculum is, or the year um, uh, training schedule is up on uh, the Suarez International Facebook page. Um, so that, that, uh, that you book through, um, uh, we've, I've got a company who do, does all the, 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 the bookings, manage the events. The bookings, yeah. There we go. The bookings for, for Cape Town, that's uh, Mark Mulder at Gun Portal. But again, you can contact me and I'll send you his details. I say he handles all of that because I've got the, the America, the England stuff, um, and various other countries. Oh, yes, I've, I've actually met the guys at Gun Portal. I went in there a couple of weeks back. They're very nice guys, oh, nice group of guys. Good lads. They know what they're doing. Uh, we use them for all our uh, competencies. Um, know what they're doing, switched on, and fantastic prices. You, you just, agreed, uh, agreed. Um, I was looking at a Glock 43 9mm single stack, and mm. they were offering me a price that was about 2.5K off market. So, yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. They've they've got some excellent pricing, and you know what? They know what they're doing there. They the Carl and Mark are they switched on. They they're not. You know, you can see they have a passion for what they do, um, and that's that's it's unique. It's unique in the business. It's not just about money. It's about um, you know their passion and they love doing what they do. Thank you, Gerald. So let, let's call it a day, and uh, hopefully we can chat again in the future. This was very interesting. I'd love to pick this up again sometime. Sure, sure, anytime you want. Thank you, and have a great evening. Thanks so much. Up, you too. God bless. Take care. Goodbye.